happy little games. Hello everybody and welcome back to the history of Mega Man Part 5. Sorry for the brief hiatus, but I had Mega Man coming out of my ears and just needed to take a little bit of a break from the Blue Bomber. But enough chit chat. I'm sure there are a lot of you out there that need your Blue Man fix, so let's get going. After the astronomical success of Mario Kart, many companies were jumping on the bandwagon with their own versions. Rockman Battle and Chase was released for the PlayStation 1 in 1997. The game was released only in Japan and Europe. However, it finally got a North American release as part of the Rockman X Collection for the PlayStation 2 and GameCube in 2006. As the story goes, there is a new hit TV show called Battle and Chase. It's an extreme racing show that pays the winner 10 million zenny. Word travels fast and soon many robots have signed up to win the top prize including Mega Man, who decides to enter the tournament to win enough money to fix Dr. Light's computer. And Dr. Wily shows up at the end of the tournament and steals the money, so you have to race against him and Bates to recover it. Initially, you have a total of 10 racers to choose from, each one with different attributes and two more that are unlockable. Some of the characters and their vehicles that are selectable are Mega Man and his Rush Roadster, Roll and her Pop and Beat, Proto Man in the Red Striker, Ice Man in the Cool Mobile, Bass in the Treble Dark Star, Spring Man in the Surprise Boxer, Napalm Man in the Patriotic Bomber, among others. Dr. Wily and Duo are also unlockable characters. Each character and their vehicles all have different attributes which involves a bit of strategy just like the traditional Mega Man games. Each of the characters have two special abilities to attack other drivers and yes, Mega Man does have his Mega Buster. Each character has his own personalized ending in single player mode which makes the replay value very high. There are over a dozen courses to race on with various hazards and obstacles littered throughout. Instead of avoiding these, you are encouraged instead to destroy them. If you manage to take out 10, you are rewarded with a special item such as a shield or disabling the other racer's weapons. By winning races in the Grand Prix mode, you are awarded parts to upgrade your vehicle with. The graphics look decent in 3D, but the frame rate is a bit choppy and not as smooth as some of the other kart racers on the market at the time. Each vehicle controls fairly well and there are plenty of characters to choose from. It's fairly obvious that this is a Mario Kart ripoff just set in the Mega Man universe. So if you enjoy that sort of thing, be sure and check it out. Mega Man X4 was released in 1997 for the PlayStation and Sega Saturn. This was the first Mega Man game to be built from the ground up for 32-bit systems, which allowed them to use a higher quality art style and audio along with the game-saving system. The game also features full motion video animated cutscenes and separate campaigns for both Mega Man X and Zero. The game takes place in the year 21XX, just after the events of Mega Man X3, where a new Reploid anti-Maverick military force has taken over led by the General. The giant floating city Sky Lagoon crashes down to Earth and in the process kills millions of innocent civilians. Soon the fingers point to Reploforce as being behind it, so X and Zero investigate their plans to build a utopian space station but something more sinister is lurking in the background. The gameplay is very similar to the previous games in the series, with his trusty but perhaps rusty X-Buster being used as his primary weapon. As I mentioned, Zero is fully playable in this game, 
He shares a few of X's basic mechanics such as dash and climb, but plays different in terms of combat. He has a more up-close melee style using the Z-Saber. The power and accuracy makes up for its lack of range. He has no projectile attacks except for the one earned by Stormout. When a boss is defeated, Zero learns a new fighting technique instead of acquiring new weapons. This game was the first to have actual multiple armors. Speaking of your armor, there are various upgrades as found in previous games. The leg upgrade allows you to hover. The head upgrade will stop weapons from consuming any energy. The arms upgrade enables X to charge special weapons. And the body upgrade will enable X's Nova Strike Giga Attack, which is a powerful air dash attack. This was also the first game to use cheat codes to unlock specific armors for the character you have selected. The bosses you will encounter are Frost Walrus, Jet Stingray, Slash Beast, Web Spider, Split Mushroom, Cyber Peacock, Storm Owl, and Magma Dragoon. There are a couple of special armors that can be obtained with a cheat code, including the Ultimate Armor for X and the Black Armor for Zero. There are a couple of new ride armors, including the Raiden and the Eagle. The graphics and animation are fantastic and truly takes advantage of the 32-bit technology. Everything from the backgrounds to the sound effects and music all have a nice polished presentation. What is not quite so polished is the voice acting in the animated cutscenes. While it's nowhere near as bad as Mega Man 8, it's still not very good either. I've heard better voice acting on the Housewives of New Jersey. No, this isn't happening! There's no reason for me to go on! What? What am I fighting for? Control-wise, it feels just like the previous entries in the game, which is absolutely fantastic. After these messages, we'll be right back. A world under siege, where the baddest bosses rule. Who will save us? Mega Man! Mega Man! Join him on his ultimate quest in 3D! Who are his friends? Who are his enemies? Danger ducks around every corner! Mega Man uses awesome firepower to battle diabolical forces! Amazing home stop blasting action! Who can save the cities from destruction? Don't call a plumber! It's all in a day's work for Mega Man! Let's do it! Welcome. In 1998, Mega Man broke free from his two-dimensional shackles and entered the third dimension. While technically, Battle and Chase was his first 3D outing, this is the first game where it's all about Mega Man. This is a completely different type of game with the emphasis more on a light, fun story with traces of RPG elements. It also featured a free world environment in which you could roam around. The game takes place many years in the future in which you control a different spiritual incarnation of Mega Man named Mega Man Volnut. He is what's known as a digger, which is a person in charge of investigating the ruins of planet Earth. The world is covered by endless water and what's left of civilization are living on a few islands that still exist. 
Energy sources are very rare, so these diggers are looking for quantum refractors which are found in ancient ruins. The main goal of every digger is to find the mother load, which is an item of supposedly infinite power. Your friends that accompany you on these excavations are Roll Casket and her grandfather Barrel Casket. You also have Data, which is a mysterious monkey who speaks but only Mega Man can understand. During one of his journeys, he crashes into Catalox Island where Mega Man confronts pirates who are attempting to locate hidden treasure. As I mentioned, this is a third person action RPG that the player has to explore dig sites looking for parts to help restore his ship and get off the crashed island. Upon exploring these ruins, you will come across many different items that help power up Mega Man. The most common thing you come across are Zenny, which is the currency used and comes in the form of crystals when certain enemies and objects are destroyed. These can be used at the town market to purchase buster parts, power-ups, and health upgrades. He does have his Mega Buster and secondary weapons. The Mega Buster can be upgraded in terms of range, power, energy, and rapid fire. The secondary weapons include tripwires and laser beams. He can also upgrade his armor by finding a helmet, buying new armors for increased protection, and shoes that allow Mega Man to jump higher or skate around the city. Since this is an open world environment, there are various places to explore and different challenges you can participate in. You can visit the Apple Market, go downtown, visit City Hall, and the library among others. What is unique is that Mega Man has an effect on the city itself. A lot of your battles take place inside city limits and the buildings become collateral. You are then given the opportunity to invest Zenny to pay for the reconstruction. The further into the game you get, the more side missions become unlocked. The controls are standard for 3D action games. You can jump and shoot, but the addition of L1 and R1 allows for advanced movement. This is also one of the first games to enable enemy lock-on, but it doesn't work quite as well as Z-targeting. Also, you cannot move while targeting. This was the first game that you could play as Mega Man where he actually takes his helmet off and lets his luscious locks flow. The graphics and animation were applauded at the time, but looking at it 25 years later, the jaggies are extremely noticeable. Don't get me wrong, they still look good, but with the advancement of modern emulators, it's possible to use texture filtering to smooth everything out. I would recommend this if you're going to go back and play this game. The game controls fairly well, especially for an early 3D title. You're gonna end up with a 1998 saw the release of Mega Man and Base, which is a side-scrolling action platformer released only in Japan for the Super Nintendo. It would later get a worldwide release for the Game Boy Advance in 2003. This title originally started life as a Super Nintendo version of Mega Man 8, but they decided to redo it as an original title using the assets from number 8 instead. The producer wanted to create a game with regards to younger players who did not own the more advanced 32-bit systems. As the story goes, the game takes place in 20XX, approximately a year after the events of Mega Man 8. A mysterious robot who calls himself King has stolen various data on the Robot Masters from the Robot Museum to create a brand new army. It's up to Mega Man and Base to put their differences aside and save the day. The game is set up similar to previous games in the series in which you can pick any of the three robot masters to fight. Defeating each one will open up more levels. This game allows you to play as either Mega Man or Base with each one playing differently. Mega Man has his chargeable Mega Buster and Slide Move. 
Base has a double jump, can shoot multiple pellets, and aim his buster at multiple angles. Mega Man's faithful dog Rush is back with the ability to search for items or an adapter for Base to combine with his wolf treble to temporarily fly. Introduced in this game are data CDs, which are CDs that contain info about most of the characters in the Mega Man universe, including ones from the Game Boy and Sega Genesis titles. The CDs are hidden all throughout the levels with some only being reachable by Mega Man and others by Base. You can make two separate save files for each character to find all the CDs. As I mentioned, instead of a password system, the game uses save files. The shop from previous Mega Man games makes its return with Auto serving as a shopkeeper. Some items are exclusive to Mega Man and others to base. You can purchase more life, protection against deadly spikes, analysis of the weakness of a robot master and many more. The robot masters you encounter are Cold Man, Burner Man, Pirate Man, Round Man Tengu Man Magic Man Astro Man and Dino Man. The graphics and animation are fantastic and look very close to Mega Man 8 only with a downgraded palette. The music though is not very good and it sounds like an early Super Nintendo title. It's not bad but it's just not what the system is capable of. The gameplay is still extremely tight and just because it was designed with kids in mind, it still has a few difficult levels. In the early 90s, thanks to CD-based technology, full motion video games were once again on the rise. In the early 1980s, it was Dragon's Lair and Space Ace. In the early 90s, it started with Night Trap. For some odd reason, Capcom thought this would be a great idea for a Mega Man game. Super Adventure Rockman was released in 1998 for the PlayStation and Saturn. You get full screen animated video similar to Dragon's Lair, and also the non stop action and incredible gameplay similar to Dragon's Lair. The game takes place across three CDs, with each one containing a miniature episode. You even get an intro and next episode bumper similar to Saturday morning cartoons. As the story goes, the evil, dastardly Dr. Wily has rediscovered an alien supercomputer named Ramoon in the ruins of the Amazon. He uses it to revive his robot masters from Mega Man 2 and Mega Man 3. In the process, he rediscovers a hidden ability in Ramoon that will seize most of the electricity and machinery in the world. Roll is affected by the virus, but Dr. Light gives an immunization to Mega Man and his brothers. Not only is the fate of the entire planet at stake, but more importantly, so is Roll's. The majority of the game is spent watching video clips with each disc containing roughly 30 minutes of animated footage. Every once in a while, you are given a choice in a path, although it really doesn't have any bearing on the outcome of the game. 
The choices can either lead you to items or an ambush from the enemy. A quick time event will also happen from time to time. All the fighting is done in a first person shooting gallery mode. The battles are button mashers that will make your fingers cramp up in no time. You can charge up your Mega Buster, but with the never ending array of enemy bullets and strikes, you don't have much time to do this. You can switch to your special weapons that you have earned, but their attacks drain your energy at an alarming rate. This game never left Japan and has never had a re-release. Rumor has it that the creator of the series has even disowned the game. In 1999, released only in Taiwan, was Rockman Gold for Windows. This was licensed out to Taiwan developer Strawberry Software. The game is similar to Rockboard and Monopoly in which you have to acquire properties and assets by rolling the dice and spending money. The odd thing is that winning or losing doesn't have any effect on the storyline. All of the art from the game appears to have been taken from Mega Man 8 only at a lower quality. There are six playable characters available including Mega Man, Proto Man, Base, Duo, and new characters sporting shades and a suit by the name of Mayor. Natural disasters can occur at random such as meteor showers, Godzilla, and volcanoes among others. If you like the original rock board game, then this might be just up your alley. Just when you had thought you had seen every type of Mega Man game possible, along comes Rockman X Storm Tornado. This is an educational title released only in Taiwan, once again by Strawberry Software. There are six challenges available for you as you face off against Maverick from Rockman X3. This was one of the only games where X appears without his helmet. If your math skills are not quite as polished as they should be, be sure and check this one out. And that takes care of the history of Mega Man Part 5. I hope you've been enjoying the series, so stay tuned for Part 6 coming soon to a YouTube near you. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Thank you all so much for watching.